Station Welcome to the Lightroom 3 Podcast, my name is RC. Now, the first change that you'll see inside of Lightroom 3 is its import facility. What they've done here is they've kind of made a simple and a complex way for you to be able to import your images inside of Lightroom. Now, let's go ahead and simulate putting in a card. I've just got a card of some sample images. I'll just go ahead and I'll import that. And you're gonna notice that in a couple of seconds, the card will mount and then you'll see something that looks like this. So right off the bat, you'll get a section here that'll give you a source and it'll give you a destination. So the source for me is going to be that card that's coming in. So you'll notice that right here you have a source section. And if you click on the drop down, that tells me what device I have. So now I have an Icon D300 and I can select from a variety of different sections sitting here on the left hand side. Now I'm gonna be using the Nikon D300 card. You'll notice that right here you get a preview of all of the images that you have. And like before, you can go ahead and uncheck images or check all of the images to be able to import these images in. Now, if you wanted to be able to import only select images, what you can do is you can uncheck all of these and then single click and control command click the images that you want to be able to import. Once you have those set, you can go ahead and click on the checkbox and you'll notice that those only become imported or become checked for you to be able to import. You can also just check all of them to be able to bring them in. If you'd like, you can also sort these on the card by check state, by file name, or by your overall caption time, capture time, as well as increase or decrease the thumbnails that you have there. So this is pretty much telling you what the source for this file is. So we're using a card. Now you have a couple of options, right? You can copy this as a DNG, which will take the raw file and it'll convert it into a digital negative file or a DNG file. You can go ahead and select copy, which will copy the file into a new location. You can go ahead and move the files, or you can go ahead and add the files to the catalog without necessarily moving them from one location to another location. So you have a series of different options that are here. In this case, because it's a card, it's only giving you the two options, copy as DNG or copy. Your location would be this one area here. If you wanted to be able to save this to a new location, what you could do is you could just click right on here and select other destination from the dropdown. As you add more destinations, that information will be down here under the recent section. For now, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it at pictures. You have a series of options for you to be able to select how you want this file to be manipulated. So if you click on the file handling drop down, you can set whether or not you want individual previews, whether or not you want one-to-one -one previews or standard previews. You can minimize whether or not you want duplicates. You can also set a backup section here. So if you're backing this up to a secondary hard drive, you can go ahead and just click on this checkbox and then select the location here. If you wanna be able to rename your files, you can select the Rename Files checkbox, and then this will give you a series of templates that you can use, much like the ones that you would have inside of the Export dialog in Lightroom 2. And you have the option to be able to create a series of different templates for that. I'll go ahead and I'll check this one section here, Apply During Import. If you have any kind of metadata templates or if you have any develop settings, you can go ahead and add this right here as well. So. If I wanted to be able to take one of the presets, I can do one of the presets here. Notice you have camera profiles here available to you as well. If you have any metadata, you can go ahead and set up a preset for metadata and you can have all of that information there. The key point here is keywords. Right off the bat, you have the option to be able to insert the, keyboard, the keywords that you want for this. Now, destination, you're putting it in one in the pictures folder here. You can also set up a subfolder and type in a subfolder in this one area, and you can specify how you want them to be organized by date or into one folder. I almost always use the into one folder option. So this allows you to be able to kind of navigate through different directories so that you can place those images. 
Once you've done this over and over again, chances are you're probably not going to want to see all of this information. So you have a couple of different options. Once you specify all of these settings once, you can come down here in this one area and you can specify a preset. So you can save these current settings as a preset here and then you can just click on that. The second thing that you can do is as you become more familiar, you can just twirl this up and leave this up. What this does is just gives you a minimized view and just tells you where's your source, what are you doing and where you're setting it to. If you're not making any major changes, this is probably one of the best ways for you to be able to do this. Once you have this all set, you can just click on import and your images are imported into Lightroom 3. My name's RC. Thanks for watching.